one of the things GIS allows us to do is not just narrow down our data by getting rid of cases or observations that we don't want, but it also allows us to add in data, additional variables that we may want to look at in our maps. So if I actually right click on my shapefile over here on the left and open up the attribute table, you can see that we already have a number of variables already embedded in this shapefile. Each census tract has a population, population density, uh, down, broken down by race, um, age, household composition, and so on. But it's also missing a lot of other variables that are of interest to us as sociologists. Uh, we may want to look at um, percent impoverished, median household income, uh, linguistic isolation, and things like that. So I'll show you how we can go about actually adding in census data. So what we do is we'll pull up a browser, and I recommend Chrome, Internet Explorer works. I'm less certain about Firefox. In the past, Firefox hasn't worked really well with the Census Bureau website, um, but it might work now. But I'm using Chrome here. Once you're in the, the main census page, you'll go to Data and American Fact Finder. And they're obviously transitioning to a new Fact Finder, so we'll go to the new one, Fact Finder 2. And the first thing you want to do is tell it what, what geographies you're working with. Now think about the map that we're working with here is census tracts in the Denver Aurora urban area. So ultimately we want to get data that has been aggregated to the census tract level. So we'll click on geographies and eventually a little window pops up here and you can see in the geographic type the various options, state, county, and so on. We're going to want census tracts Again, we want census tract level data. And we want census tracts within Colorado. Now, this is all census tracts within Colorado, which is obviously more census tract data than we need, but that's okay because when we join it to our shapefile, it'll only keep the data that actually has a um, corresponding tract in our shapefile. So we click all census tracts within Colorado and tell it to add. And you can see that it's been added up here in our filters. So then I'll close this out. And now we want to tell it to what data set we want to use under the topics. Now, unfortunately, at this point, the 2010 census data has not been uh, fully released, particularly for census tracts. You can get estimates that are based on the American Community Survey, um, though they have, I think, relatively large margins of error. So at this point, we're still going to use the 2000. Um, census data. And we want the 2000 SF3. This is sample data. And we're using, it's one in six sample. We're using it because it provides uh, a lot more variables than just the actual census itself. So 2000 SF3 sample data. And the variables we want um, are located a ways in. So I'm going to actually just click through this really quick because um, we want to get to about page 16 here. I already know what variables I'm interested in. So if I click on 16, there we go. So the variables that I typically will look at are P007. This is Hispanic or Latino by race. It allows us to sort of disaggregate um, race and ethnicity so we can look at white non-Hispanics, Latinos, black non-Hispanics, and so on. So we'll click on that. We'll do P21, P021 for citizenship status, whether they're foreign born or not. Um, next page, we'll do P053, median household income. And then we'll do P087 for poverty status. Okay. So those are the variables I want, and I'll go ahead and click download. Um, you may opt to, if you're worried about pop-up blockers getting in the way, you may want to hold down the control key while you do this. Um, pop-up blockers can erase a lot of your data. So click download and it's going to download to zip files. We'll hit OK. And while this is building my file, I'm going to go ahead and pause because this can take a while. So it's done building my file. Now I can go ahead and hit download. And again, you may want to hold down your control key to prevent your pop-up blocker from getting in the way. And this again can take a little while because this might be a, a sizable data set, so I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. So here it is downloading here um, in Chrome. It looks like it's done. I'll go ahead and open it up. And while we wait for it to open up, uh, there it is. So 
what you'll notice is that for each variable, there's uh, an Excel data, se data sheet, uh, P007, P021, which was full and born status, um, P087, P053. Unfortunately, they're not all in, in the same Excel file. So what we'll have to do is um, clean up each of those, and then we'll just bring them into a single um, Excel sheet to bring into GIS. So let me start with the P007. Double click to open that up. And while we wait for that to open up, I'll pause. So my data set is opened up. Um, we're going to start editing this. You might have to click on a editing session button up here to start that. Um, first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of excess stuff that we don't need. Um, it, there's a lot of things we do need to keep. The first thing to keep in mind is that we need for each row, this, each one of these rows is a census tract in Colorado. What we need to do is make sure that we keep an identifying number that corresponds to a number in our uh, GIS shapefile. Okay. Um, and we're left here with two GOID numbers. We have this rather long one that starts with 14000 US and so on, and then we have this shorter one. Um, this is the one we want. Column B, this one that looks, it has, let's see, three, four, five, six, uh, about 10 or so, um, 10 or 11 digits in it. We're going to want to keep this one. We'll get rid of column A. So I'll right click on A, delete. And I also don't need this particular column that tells us this is census tract. We can get rid of that. Right click and delete. Now, now we want to give these some of these variables some labels. This is the total population. So I'm going to call this pop coat. Okay. This one is the total number of people who are not Hispanic or Latino, and then of those who are white alone. So I'm going to call this one white NH for white non-Hispanic. This is black non-Hispanic, so I'm going to call it black NH. And let's just go through and we'll only do white, black, and then we'll do Hispanic. So if we scroll over here is where we see Hispanic or Latino, so we'll do Latino. And we can get rid of all these other ones. So I'm just going to left click and hold, let up, right click and delete. Left click, hold, right click, delete. And I also don't need all these excess rows now at the top. Delete those. And I'll, I usually call this join ID. This is pop tote. And I don't need this column either. So that's how you go about cleaning up your Excel sheet. And we can name this Colorado Sen. And what we'll do is we're going to add in all of our other clean data sets. So what you should do is we'll go back to our download. And let's get our P021. And what we want is this foreign born number, the total number of foreign born. We can get rid of all these other ones. And those. Don't need that. Don't need that first identifying number. And we don't even need this one anymore. Uh, if we want, we can keep it for now and rename these something short and sweet, no spaces, no symbols. Call this join ID. And let's get rid of these excess rows at the top. So now what we can do is copy those columns, go back to our original one that we started and paste them in. And you can see that the join IDs match up. We just want to make sure um, that they should match up in every case. So we can actually get rid of this one. Now we can go through and let's get rid of this one now. We don't need that. Let's open up our next one. P53. This is median household income. Let's just call it MHI. We can get rid of all these other columns, get rid of that excess row at the top. Let's copy this in. And then let's open up P087. Now this one is the total number of people we know the poverty status of. Some are poor and some are not. And then this is the number of people who are actually below poverty. So we know the status of, and these are the number of those who are actually below poverty. Then it breaks it down by age. We don't need all of that age breakdown. So we'll highlight all those and delete those. And we 
can get rid of these excess rows. This is, I call this pop stat for pop status and then pop below. And out of that, we can actually create our percent impoverished. It would just be pop below over poverty status to get percent impoverished. So we'll copy those in. And once you got it all cleaned up, nice and neat, simple, short, sweet variable names, no spaces, no symbols. We'll just do file save as. And we'll save it to where we're saving all of our stuff today. And we'll call it Colorado Sen, Colorado Census. I save it as a 9703 workbook. Save. And we can close it down then. Close down all of our Excel files. And that's how you put together uh, a census data. I'm going to go ahead and stop it at this point. And I'll, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how we can add that data into GIS and join it with our shapefile. In this tutorial, I want to show you how we can add in features like interstates or railroads and then clip them around the boundary of the shapefile that we're ultimately working with. Um, so we'll go ahead and add data. And we'll navigate to where that data is kept. Uh, I'll keep buying right here. And I'll go ahead and add interstates. And you can see if I go out to the full extent by hitting the earth here, there's a, that data layer, a shapefile of interstates covers the entire United States. Uh, which is obviously more than I want, and I want to be able to have just the interstates as they exist inside of the Denver Aurora urban area I've created. So what we can do is go to geoprocessing up here at the top, and we're going to clip those interstates off at the boundaries. This is a rather intuitive um, menu here. The input feature is what we want to clip. So if I pull down there, interstates, the features to be clipped. The clip feature is what I'll clip around, which is our shape file they're working with. Ours is called Denver Tracks here, Den Tracks. And then output feature class is where we want to save them. And you want to make sure that that does in fact save to where you're um, keeping all of your data. So I'm going to call this Den Instate for Denver Interstates. And we can go ahead and hit OK. And you can see it clipping away here at the bottom right. And I'll pause while that finishes. OK, it finished. It usually takes about 10 or 15 seconds um, and shows you when it's done. And what it did is it added a new uh, layer over here, data layer. Um, and I can get rid of the old one, right click on interstates and remove it. And it's hard to see, so I'll just do a normal click on the little line here, and I can increase the width a little bit, say to 2.5, and so you can see them. And you can, you know, left click and play around with the color, um, something like that. So that's how you go ahead and add in things like railroads and interstates and go about uh, clipping them.